it was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. We've missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just un... Like, the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling. Like, you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get is a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. My name is Cade Moyer, and you are listening to the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the podcast, be sure to leave us a rating or review wherever you listen and head on over to our website, believepod.com, and consider becoming a member to get bonus episodes and video content. Well, James, man, this conversation went in a completely different direction to where I thought it would. And I'm not even complaining about it because I love talking about Bigfoot. I love talking about UFOs. And when those two kind of conversations uh, meet in the middle, I think it's uh, it's a good day when that happens. Yeah. You want to hear my crazy UFO story? Mate, if if it gets crazier than that, yes, I do. <laughs> this is uh, This is my craziest story by far. Um, I had a buddy, he was a, a university professor, and I was telling him, I said, I think, because you know, it seemed like, like you could like have like te- some kind of telepathy with him to a certain level, and I always had the feeling like I could get picked up by him if I wanted to. So I told my buddy, it, it, but part of me was saying, like, don't do that, but part of me was saying, like, dude, go for a ride. But then I remember Travis Walton's movie, and that, that did not look fun. Oh, yeah, that's, that that would be terrifying. It feels like that. Right. And um, so anyways, this guy came up. We went out there, and we went out to this rock that sticks way out in the ocean, Wedding Rock. It's kind of famous. Anyone from uh, this travel to the coast out here would, would know what it is. We were out there by ourselves. You know, it's wintertime. Uh, this, is, this is the fourth year into it. This was 93. And I said, I said, all right, let's go for a ride. I said, well, we'll go out there and sit like the girl showed me. You know, we'll put our sit in that lotus position and just start concentrating on. Uh, we we want to go for a ride. Come pick us up, and we did. And we we're sitting there doing that for about five or ten minutes or something. And then way out, the one that she called the mothership, the red and white one, dropped down like just dropped like a. You see a spider just drop, and then like it just stops, like boink, because it, it just stopped putting out webbing, and it just kind of bounces, stops. It was like that. That's what it reminded me of. And then it just started. It was way out over the horizon. Then it just started. You could tell it was coming at us very rapidly, and I was like just frozen, like oh my god, like this is happening, like no effing way, this is insane. I look over at my buddy, I'm like. I, was, I, I couldn't talk. And then I got the worst dread I've ever felt. Like just this overwhelming, and it, this voice inside of me was saying, Bobes, do not get on this thing. This is not your friend. This means you harm. This is not going to be good for you. Get up and go. Don't get on. And, it, and uh, it was like this internal fight. Like it was like I was frozen. Like I couldn't move. Like I was just, I couldn't. And then, my inner voice said, you better get your shit together and get out of here. Move. And then I just remember shaking my head like a movie, you know, like, like where you're like literally shaking your head side to side going like, who? And I jump up and I grab my buddy. And I said, let's go, let's go. And he's, he's, he, he looks at me and his eyes are, he's just frozen in panic. Like his eyes are popping out of his head. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. We, we both couldn't. I said, go, and he just wouldn't move, and I reached out and slapped him in the face really hard, grabbed him by his hair and his shirt, and started dragging, and it's, it's all rock, like there's, it's this giant rock, and all the steps and seats and everything are carved out of the rock, so I'm dragging him down this rock, this, I don't know, 80 feet high or whatever, 
hundred, uh, something like 80, hundred feet or whatever. And we, I start dragging and he starts, he starts going blah, blah, like waking up. Then he, then all of a sudden he comes to and just starts, scr- almost knocks me off the side of the freaking cliff to go, to go past me. We run down, we run down the backside of Wedding Rock and then so now the rocks between us and this ship that's coming flying in over the water. And so we run down, we get to the bottom, and then you have to go back up the cliff face. There's a, a zigzaggy trail that goes up that takes you back up to the to the bluff, and the park's all on a bluff up there. Uh, it's a hundred and something acres, a couple hundred acres or something. And uh, so we're running up into there, and there's the bushes, these thickets and stuff are, I don't know, probably eight feet to ten feet high in places, and we're running up. And I'm looking over my shoulder. I'm like, oh, good, it's not there. And we're getting up near the top at this point. I look over and I see red and white glowing on the cliff face on the other side of the rock. That sticks out further to see than the rock does. And all the sea lions, there's a sea lion breeding colony there and a fur seal breeding colony right there. And they both were going in just crazy. There's several hundred pinnipeds, marine pinnipeds going, arr, arr, arr. You, know, you, you hear them jumping in the water. Um, yeah, they were, they were going crazy. They just they were just erupting, and we ran up. We we kept running. We ran up into the parking lot, and we stopped. And sure as shit, dude. Like you, you remember, Mister uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah, yeah. The movie. Yeah. You remember those? Remember those little um, UFOs that got chased down the, by the cop, and they run through like the toll booth and all that. Yeah. This was exactly. Whoever seen that, whoever made those props for that movie had seen a real UFO because he just, they made those just miniature of what this thing was. This thing was 30 to 40 feet tall. It was shaped like a lava lamp, an upside down lava lamp, and it just pulsed. Like you couldn't see like distinct, and it, it just flew silently, like hovering. It flew up and over us. And oh, there was two red basketball looking like, I guess you call them orbs. Like just red glowing basketballs swirling around it, like um, like a like a Miss like a Miss uh, Miss USA contest beauty contestant sash. You know, it goes like from left shoulder to your right hip. Yeah, yeah. So say say like this: this UFO represents the torso. There was like one sash going like right shoulder to the left hip, and then left shoulder to right hip. They were um, they were they weren't hitting each other, but they were they were. Uh, doing the same pattern just reversed on each side of it so they're they're really fast they're going like that and we just watched this thing and we it was it was so nuts because we both just tilted our heads back and as it flew over us i mean it was just above the treetops and it was it was within a couple hundred feet of us didn't feel any heat didn't sense anything there was no air coming out of it um it just floated silently it floated up over us went past us and as it flew over us we both and if anyone ever goes to patrick's point state park and looks it's where the uh gray, the life-size gray whale is painted in the parking lot that's where it was we were inside that gray whale painting and it flew over us and we both tilted our heads back and we didn't turn around we just kept tilting our heads back and we both fell on our backs like kind of got hurt like fell on the, on the asphalt like it was so like it was just such a stupid like who does it, who just keeps tilting back till they fall? Like that's like what a like a toddler does, like you know, like an eighteen month old kid or something. But <laughs> we both did it, and then we we were sitting on the ground looking up. I remember I scraped my elbow real bad; it was bleeding. It was like gravel and stuff up there on top of the. It was broken down asphalt, and this like we didn't see any opening open, but just this hockey puck looking thing came out of it. It was about five feet long and about two feet tall two and a half foot tall something like that and it just came out like but it just came out of it and it and then the bigger one kept floating back up over the trees and then over the course of like 45 seconds to a minute like at least a hundred of these red orbs just went choo 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 shot out of the the little hockey puck thing just the same red balls that were flying around the outside of the big ship just they started just firing out just Shoot! They, it was like they were coming out like a hundred miles an hour, and within within less than ten feet, they were like just 
floating, like slowly, gently floating, and they were going all over the place. Someone told me there were sensors, like they were, like, they, whatever, and a couple of them, or some of them flew down where the sea, and sea lions were. So, yeah, they, they, and then at this point, we were just both tripping, and this, it, all of a sudden we hear, uh, we, we, so we start, we're like, I'm like, dude, let's get out of here. Like, I, I did not want to get picked up. So we started walking, and there was a family roasting hot dogs and marshmallows in the tree line, not far from us at all oblivious to holding they're all all the kids and the parents are staring at the fire holding like their sticks with the marshmallows um then we heard two different vehicles i remember one was an old like brady bunch style station wagon just ripping out of the parking lot um up where some other campers were just like hauling ass like burning rubber like and there's there's ranger cops are like they're real strict they, they live on premises like it's not a place to screw around like you don't do shit like that you, you get arrested and these this Station around a bunch of people are, uh, like yelling and screaming, just goes flying. Then another car goes flying out. Then this dude, this like kind of small, kind of stocky looking hippie guy, is running out. You could hear all his tent stakes and stuff dragging, clinging. He was dragging, dragging his tent with his sleeping bag over his shoulder and his, and his uh, backpack over his other shoulders. He looks over us and we're, we're kind of jogging and he's sprinting through the meadows. And he looks over us and goes, there's some weird fucking shit going on here, man. We go, yeah. And then he just, he ran. We, we were heading back because we weren't uh, parked in the park because they charged like a day fee, whatever. So we just parked outside the gate and walked in like the 15 minute hike through the woods. So we were heading back that way. And um, we saw several groups of campers like further in the distance in the trees, uh, you know, at their campfires. It wasn't very crowded. Like, it was pretty empty really because it was winter. Um, we as we're hiking out, we had to go past the park employee housing, and there was a couple ranger. Well, one ranger, and the other one was like a biologist or something. We're sitting, this guy and girl, were sitting on the back porch, watching, just staring. I said, "I said, you guys call this in? Did you call this in?" They're like, just smiled and shook their heads no. And I said, "Can you believe this shit?" Like they're just like nodding. They, they, they weren't talking. They were just nodding their heads and smiling. Like, yep. Yep, this is this is we see this all the time kind of vibe and I was up there a lot and I never saw anything like that. I saw that night and it uh, we just never saw um that hockey puck followed us it followed us for a ways above the tree line like it was kind of flying over where the people were but it's so and the trees are so thick and tall that they couldn't see it but, but um it's a, some people saw it but not as many that should have and it, uh, we were walking across the meadow. Actually, we were walking across the meadow. We cut across. Is do you remember the original Jurassic Park? Remember when the Velociraptors come from all six directions and like they're it's an overhead like drone shot, and like you see them coming. But that was the actual meadow they filmed that in. Where that's what we were walking oh, through. Oh wow! That happened. Yeah, kind of just another coincidence. But um, yeah, that was that was like the that was the only time I ever got close to one or. One came close to me, I should say. What what goes through your mind in a situation like that? Because are you, are you thinking like, damn, this is a UFO, like this is this is crazy, or are you thinking, what the hell's going on? Like you just can't fathom it. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Also, are you wanting more content? Why not become a Believe Plus member? You'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public. Not only that, you'll also get our regular feed without any ads. Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. You're in shock. Like you're processing it. Like, because at this point, it had been four years into this, you know, and uh, you're, it was shocking, but I've always been pretty calm and collected in hectic, stressful situations. Just like, you know, working on crab boats and surfing, you know, big waves, being in life and death situations a lot. You learn to like control your breathing, stay focused, don't panic, just don't panic. I think it says a lot about you as a person to to not kind of have a freak out or just have a bit of a meltdown essentially about what you've just experienced because a lot of people will absolutely go down a rabbit hole after that because 
Oh, it, I did. Because it, it, <laughs> it breaks the paradigm. Yeah, I dropped out of school, actually. I was going to university. Wow, well, b- because of this event? Uh, not that one. Actually, the earlier, earlier, when I, I was like, why are they, like, this is the most important story in the world. Like, these people don't know shit. If they, they don't even know about, I knew they didn't know about Bigfoot. They weren't teaching that. They don't know about UFOs either. Like, what am I, I, I did who knows about these things? I, I want to learn from the people that know about these things. These are what are blowing my mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I have to, I have to ask, like, you've had these pretty profound experiences with, with UFOs. What do you think they are in, in your opinion, based off the, the events that you've personally experienced? Um, I'd say there's no way I've had other sightings and you know, what's funny dude is all the ones I've seen are all totally different. None of them have looked the same at all. Like when I could actually see a structure shape, cause usually it's just, I mean, I said, I've seen them over a hundred times, like Far out. 95 of those times it was just pulsating dots flying erratic in the sky. Yeah. But yeah. The, I, I, and, uh, before that in, um, 1990, before that 91, when the, uh, was it the Netherlands re- accused the U- USA of flying secret military weapons over the country? And it was like, I remember it was on ABC Worldwide News. I saw it on that, our, our ABC. Um, and it was it was big news for like, you know, like it was in the papers and everything. And I saw a black triangle flying up over the same highway, but uh, south where the first one was probably about 25, 30 miles south of there over the one that went on. Fourth of July is like our biggest summer holiday. Um, it was Fourth of July weekend. The Saturday it was the Saturday night before Fourth of July. I think it was the third, and the roads were packed. And it was uh, the sun was down. There was blue to the west, dark to the east, and I I could barely make out this shape coming down, flying over the highway. And it was this big black triangle. I, the woman driving. I said, "Pull over, pull over, pull over." And her and her kid. Her kid was about seven or eight, and her and I were looking at looking. Uh, out through the windshield and I jumped out got, and I was wa- I watched it fly right over our heads. And the weird thing is I've never heard anyone say this about their triangle sightings, black triangles was that, so you got your three points, obviously at, uh, it, it acted like it was like a, you know, like when they put those blow up, uh, inflatable gutter. So you can't throw a gutter ball when kids bowl. Oh yeah. You know like, I mean? yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. And like, they'll throw a bowling ball down at his, pins off each side bounces it's going it's going in one direction but it's, it's bouncing back and forth different directions as it's going that one overall direction that's what this was doing but each time like it like it would go like a couple hundred yards that way it would spin and then the like the the, 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 the so say that there's a point b point c point or the three points so like a point would lead it would bounce off like say the left side and then b point would be the, the lead point and then it would bounce off the the other side of the of the lane and then it would bounce off to go to the other side then c point would be like the lead point like it kept rotating like it, there was no front or back yeah right and there was no other lights i didn't everyone always i see all the illustrations i see there's like there's a like a, a yellow or white circle light in the each corner there there was nothing like that this was solid black there's about 100 yards on each side so it's a fairly big craft, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then I've seen two really huge ones. Um, one was right in front of my house. It was uh, the I live right on the ocean, and the the, the clouds are blowing in off off the real low clouds, like five hundred thousand feet up maybe. And there it was blowing pretty good, probably fifteen knots blowing inland. And it was patchy. It was you know about. 85% cloud cover, something 80% cloud cover. There's this weird, odd cloud going against the wind coming towards towards us. Um, not directly, it was, it was about a mile south of us, but coming in our general direction. And as there was some gaps in the clouds, like it looked like there was like a little bit of lightning, like uh, heat lightning or something going on in there. Uh, I, I was telling my neighbors um, who weren't the best witnesses because the mom's a little nutty and the daughter has a uh, really bad night vision, but they could, they could both make it out. Um, and so we're like just tripping out on it going, Oh my, 
this is insane. This is after I'd had a lot of other experiences. And it was it was like a giant, like, there was nothing aerodynamic about it at all. It was like, it looked like apartments and buildings and offices all bolted onto this huge, like, metallic box, like just metallic boxes all attached together with like lights pulsing in different places. Um, looked like a flying city. I don't even know how big that one was. It could have been. It could have been up to like a quarter mile long. Yeah, yeah. I've 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 heard you know people come on the show and talk about UFOs that are like a kilometer long and you know big as a football field, and it, it's got to make you think. Like, what is responsible for for something like that? Yeah, and then, and the fact that I mean, anyone that was looking at anyone that was looking at the night sky. It would be like, why is that cloud that has like, because like we never get lightning on the coast. Like maybe I can count on, it doesn't even take one hand to count how many times because it's just wet air hitting wet air here. There's no dry air hitting. It's not until they get over the mountains of inland, the, the thunderstorms develop. So it was, it was odd enough seeing like this different colored cloud flying against all the, all the clouds coming towards it. And it was just, uh, I mean, we heard, uh, well, on some of these events I'm talking about, on the local radio station, I did hear uh, people call in and report seeing the lights. Um, and this one, there was people, other, a buddy of mine that lived miles, God, he lives eight miles from me. He was watching the same thing from his porch. He saw it, but he's obviously eight miles away, but he said, he, he, he estimated it to be a, he said he saw the whole thing um at one point it, it kind of lost its cloud cover and he said uh, he could judge it pretty well because it was flying over the peninsula and the peninsula is a half mile wide he said it looked like he said it looked like it was about half the width of the peninsula that's you massive know, so isn't four, it oh it's just massive yeah it, it, it's it's like really hard yeah it's hard to to justify like what you're seeing and if if you're seeing a craft that big it would be so difficult to to really just justify that to yourself. Like, is that real? Am I, am I seeing this? But when you've got multiple people seeing the same thing in, in the same location, you know, it really does start to add way more credence to it because it, it kind of, I guess, uh, proves that you're not, you're not seeing this, like you're not making it up. It's, it's not imaginary. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's great to have multiple witnesses always. But Bobo, you are the most interesting person I've ever spoken to, mate. I feel like I could talk to you for hours on end. This could be this could blow out to a four hour podcast. I think. <laughs> you, uh, you, well, you heard it, it couldn't because you just you've heard all my best craziest stuff already. Oh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I, I reckon we probably only touched the the tip of the iceberg with you, my friend. But before I let you go tonight, it's been an absolute pleasure to to chat with you. You know, I. I feel like I've known you for years. I've watched you on on TV basically night in, night out for the better half of a decade. And uh, it's a real treat to chat to you here in person tonight because um, it, it, I feel like it, it's, a, it's a real treat for me, essentially. But um, before I let you go, where can can people find out more about you? Like, what, you, what are you up to at the moment? Things like that, because you're, uh, you are a very, very busy individual. I'm working on these documentaries. I got held up, um, had some revenue sources not come through, and so I'm, I'm on hold right now, but we're getting ready to get back into it. Um, I just found out I talked to an attorney today, and I'm going to get money in about 11, 12 days, so then I'll be back up and finishing those up. Then I do a podcast with Cliff, the guy from the show with me, called Bigfoot and Beyond with Cliff and Bobo. It's on, you know, whatever, all the podcast places and then what else i got a page i i just been posting a little bit on there lately i don't get on there a whole lot but i do sometimes is get on uh james then in quotation marks bobo Fay, and like a uh, dash finding bigfoot that got sent up for me when i was doing the show and since i already had like fifty thousand people on it i just left it didn't you can't change the name so i just left it like it is so that that's where i post and oh, you know, you know uh, on our podcast, we just had a guy named Joe Purdue on. He got thermal footage that he just released that is pretty good. I mean, it's not as good as what you guys got down there, but 
it's a it, it, knowing all the circumstances that if the thing was huge in comparison uh, they had to get repelling ropes to get down where this thing was and it was walking around at night without a light oh that's the one looking down to, the cliff face isn't it yeah yeah Did that's you know? good yeah it's really good yeah i was gonna put a link up to that up tonight on my on my page i because when i was looking at uh, a couple of days ago before i went back down in the hills to get uh cut wood and stuff like it, no one had seen it. I think it only had like 250 views or something. It had already been up for like 10 days. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's 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 fantastic footage. Yeah, I think so. There's there's more to come, man. I mean, Moneymaker's got his drone army. He's working on. Um, he's it looks like he's getting some sponsors. So he's organizing these big drone fleets, getting like all these thermal drones and like getting together ahead of time and working out like because you know, they can program the fly grid pattern so get grid patterns going with like you know dozens of thermal drones at once that's incredible with, yeah so there's, there's stuff in the works and then if my buddy if this oil patent thing comes through like they they got these crazy crazy like he's gonna be he's gonna be set i mean just he'll have money to he could wipe his ass with thousand dollar bills the rest of his life <laughs> and he's he's down he's down for backing me on on uh squatching yeah, that's cool. That's 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 what you need in this kind of field is someone who's uh gonna kind of cover cover those expenses and you just do the the hard work essentially. Yeah, I mean, because I, I honestly do like I I didn't get paid for like months and months and I haven't even had gas money to go out or and people always are always telling me like, oh, you know, well, we want to support you, we'll, you know, start a Patreon, but I'm just like, you don't have a grown ass man. I should I I should be able to take. I'm not gonna, you know, take money out these hardworking people like they just want to donate money all like all the time to. I don't have my, my therm broke again, and um, but I, I'll take money from this guy if he's got that much money. I'm like, shoot, you know, I'll, I don't have any qualms taking money from him. <laughs> well, no, that's and that's fair enough too. I, and I I totally respect that. It's um, you know, there's there's a lot of people out there who kind of do the the fundraising for their events and and stuff like that beforehand. I think Small Town Monsters are a really good um, version of that, where they kind of do a, an annual campaign and they go out and make four billion bloody docos in a year. I don't know how those guys do it, um, but yeah, that that seems like a really effective way for them. But I totally totally get your point of view. Well, that's that's different. I mean, I I don't blame. I mean, he should be doing that. He's making documentaries like. Well, because people they want to they want me to um, broadcast live from the field, and I'm just I I'm just not into it. I'm not a I'm not a content creator, you know. <laughs> Bobo the influencer. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, Bobo, it's been fantastic talking to you tonight, mate. You too, kid. It's uh, it was honestly it was a real pleasure, and I I really want to thank you for uh, taking the time out of your uh, your busy schedule. I know it was a a really big effort for <laughs> for you to get back to to your recording studio in time to to do this. So um, you know I I appreciate that effort, and um, I'm sure our listeners will too. All right, good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and you would like to share it please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. Finally, don't forget to follow us on all our social media outlets and be sure to join our Discord server to talk to other listeners of the show. You'll find all these links in our show notes. Thank you.